not going to hide their names. I am not going to hide their identity at all uh, because I don't feel like they deserve that. my channel so today I'm coming at you with another story time as per use because you already know we turn up on Thursdays but this week we also turned up on a Tuesday so today's story is something that I honestly never thought I was going to talk about but I feel like it's worth talking about so what are we gonna do but before we get into the video as per usual today's glamour shot of the day is my beautiful glamazon Lily now Lily is a very special case because Lily's mother got a hold of me on Twitter and let me know a month prior okay that her birthday was coming up and I know that your birthday is tomorrow Lily so I just wanted to give you a special birthday shout out from both me and your mom your mom wanted me to tell you that you were always going to be her yaya and she loves you so much and so do I your mom let me know that you guys bond over my videos and that just touches my heart so happy birthday love I hope you have the most fantastic birthday be safe have fun now let's get into the video Right, so the story that I'm about to tell you guys happened pretty recently recently as in January of this year I passed by um, my old office where this whole situation took place and I happened to pass by it um, a few days ago and it just really reminded me of how hurt I was if you guys would like to know the story about the time that my boss stole from me please keep watching at the beginning of this year, I was interested in going back to school, so I wanted to go from full-time to part-time. So that's what I planned on doing. I had saved up a bunch of money so that I could kind of live off of that and make less money so that I could finally go to school because I kept pushing it off because I got bills, girl. I'm not going to hide their names. I am not going to hide their identity at all um, because I don't feel like they deserve that. The people that I'm going to be talking about today, their names are Jeremy and Rachel. They are husband and wife. Um, so at this time in my life, I wanted to go from full-time to part-time. And as most of you guys know, I worked for some big corporate companies and so I really wanted to downsize and get me a really very easy part-time job so that I can juggle that and school so I was on the hunt for a part-time job so I was like all over the place applying for jobs LinkedIn monster indeed and even responding to Craigslist ads and I was just shooting off my resume looking for a part-time job because your girl needed to go to school well, I sent out all my resumes and I was getting a few offers here and there and a lot of people wanted full-time work and I just could not do it I needed to step out of being full-time so that I could be a student and go to schools like that was the whole point right so I'm like turning down offers because I don't want to work full-time started getting callbacks for part-time work and it's really hard to find a good part-time job that is going to allow you to be a little bit more flexible with your schedule because you're going to be a student and I just I don't have any experience in retail um, I have very little experience in the food industry all of my experience is office and administrative and clerical so I was applying for those jobs because I know those jobs like the back of my hand and I needed something that I could do with my eyes closed so that I could focus on my work like for school so I remember getting a call back and I had applied for this job and it was at a plumbing company and what really caught my eye about this position was the fact that it was literally five minutes away from my house like right down the street from my house um so basically they were a small plumbing company they were husband and wife and they owned this company together I usually do really well in interviews if I do say so myself ace the interview y'all already know and um, I got a call back and they were interested in hiring me. So they offered me the position and I happily said, yes, of course, like you guys are five minutes away from me. It is part time, it was right down the street from me and it was just gonna be a perfect setup for me to go back to school and I'm working part time and all that, right? So I felt like this was like an answer from God himself. I'm finding the perfect part time job so I can get on with my life and finish my degree. I accept this position and I go in for my first day of work and uh, I realize that they don't have anybody else in the office. When I tell you guys, it was just the husband Jeremy and the wife Rachel and that was it. There were a few red flags that I should have seen in the interview that I did not pay attention to. One of which was I always ask, what happened to your previous staff? I want to know because 
not only when you're going to an interview, they're not just interviewing you, okay? You are also interviewing them. And the sooner you realize that, the better that you're going to be in your interviews because you need to have questions for them as well. Um, and one of my questions that I always ask is what happened to the person that was in this position before me? They told me that they had a mother and a daughter working for them at one point and that the mother was diagnosed with some sort of illness. I'm thinking it was cancer. Um, and then the daughter was younger and had a baby. You know, the mom got sick, the daughter had a baby, so like, let them go because of the other, you know, commitments that they had and, you know, the other things that they had going on in their life. And I should have seen that as a red flag because when an employer tells you that they let go of someone due to uh, a situation that they can't avoid or that they can't control, such as an illness, um, or even having a baby like those things are HR policy and it's against HR policy to let anybody go for any of those reasons and I know this because I worked in the corporate world. I know all about all of your employee rights, all of the HR policies. I know all about that. So I should have seen that as a red flag, but I kind of feel like I let that go over my head because I really liked this job. So basically they were hiring me to replace both of those people. Okay. So apparently the mother was um, handling all of the marketing as well as like the client relations and the daughter was handling accounting and like payroll, right? So they were hiring me with the expectation that I was going to be taking care of both of those responsibilities, which to me wasn't a big deal because I handled way more in my corporate offices. So it ain't gonna be nothing for me. So they hired me and they gave me my own office, set up a TV in there. Um, they were like super laid back, really cool. And everything seemed perfect. I was helping out the wife with accounting so Rachel did most of the accounting and I was also helping out with HR in a sense that I was helping the husband with the recruiting of different plumbers so basically the way that their company works is they are the middleman they hire plumbers and the plumbers are like contract workers and then they send the plumbers to the clients so they they have the relationship with the client then they hire the plumber and then they send the plumber to their client, if that makes sense. So they're the middleman, okay? The husband used to be a plumber back in the day. He decided that he did not want to be a plumber anymore, that he just wanted to own a business and send plumbers out. We had to find plumbers. We were shorthanded and we were getting a lot more requests from the clients and we needed to fill up those slots and be able to send a plumber out to these different locations, right? Jeremy was really, really focused on finding new plumbers, finding new recruits and Rachel was really concerned with accounting and payroll because they paid their plumbers um, I think for some of them they paid once a week and for some of them they paid once a month so their accounting situation was so confusing and so messy and so outdated and I already knew that so and they still worked with hard copy scheduling um, they still work with hard copy everything and in my world back in the corporate world everything was electronic okay did nobody have time for hard copies so I was basically showing them a whole new world. Literally showed Jeremy that e-signatures exist, okay, electronic signatures that, because when we would hire on plumbers, he was having plumbers come from all across like Denver, like from different parts of the town, all the way up north to sign new hire paperwork and that's not necessary you don't have to have somebody come to the office if you've already interviewed them and then you're hiring them why not just have them e-sign their forms like duh so i had to teach him about that i was teaching him all about that and easier ways to conduct his business. Um, so I felt like I was a valuable asset to them and I felt like my knowledge from my previous experience was helping them with their business. I was essentially doing the job of two people and that's fine, but I cannot do both of those jobs um, in one day between 10 and two. So what I did was I split it up based on priorities. So I usually had like, one day was gonna be all like HR, and then one day was gonna be all accounting, and I just went back and forth like that. I was still doing YouTube at this time, cause you know, I've done YouTube for about three years, but at this time, I wanna say I only had like 17 or 18,000 subscribers, so I was still really like a little YouTuber. Um, but I loved what I do and my passion for photography and my passion for videography and my passion for YouTube as a whole was really flourishing at this time and I really, really loved it. This being such a big part of my life, 
it came up in conversation because this office was extremely laid back. The environment wasn't that professional. So um, they wanted to know a little bit more about me. And so I let them know that one, I did YouTube. And two, I have a passion for photography and videography. Here's the thing about Jeremy, okay? Jeremy started out with, he was very, very nice. I don't, I don't think he had a passion for what he did. He had a passion for making money, okay? He would tell me all of these stories about how he cut people off because they did him so wrong. And that during his climb to having his own business that he had to cut a lot of people off because they did him wrong or whatever. And again, that was another red flag for me me that this man, no matter what, in every scenario that he was talking to me about, he was never wrong, ever. The other person was. And so he would like laugh with me about, you know, leaving people behind and not, you know, talking to them anymore or whatever. He seemed like a really petty person. And I kind of got that vibe off of him. But they were never that way towards me, ever. They were actually very sweet. Um, I was struggling at the time, obviously, and I have a Hyundai Elantra and my tires were so bald. And y'all already know that tires are so fucking expensive. And I did not have the money to get new tires. And it had snowed really bad and I was on my way to work and I was literally stuck across the street on the way to work. And my boss, well, Rachel, happened to be coming down the same street to get to work and saw me. And then Jeremy and Rachel cut me a check as like an early Christmas bonus so that I could get me new tires. And so I felt like I was really close to them. I felt like they really cared about me and my safety. As the weeks went on, I of course got really close with Rachel. Um, Jeremy would come in whenever he felt like it and be, you know, at the office, you know, whenever. And when he was there, we would have meetings about different HR strategies, different um, hiring strategies. And I had a lot of experience from my previous experience, obviously. So he and I would have those meetings and then me and Rachel would have accounting meetings and then I would have to go back to my office and do all of this. So time goes on and I told them about my passion and what I did on YouTube and all that. Jeremy, being a businessman, saw that as an opportunity to, again, utilize my skills and my previous you know, experience and knowledge of photography and videography and all that, and the fact that I am not camera shy. And he wanted me to create basically an HR video to help them with their new hires. He came to me and expressed an interest in me quite possibly creating a HR video to show to possible new hires, if that makes sense. So we started brainstorming and of course this seemed like an amazing idea. Now I'm able to put my passion and mix it into my work. Of course, I would love to do that. So I got really excited and I was like, hell yes, I'm so down. So Jeremy and I started brainstorming this idea of what kind of video we wanted to put out there to let plumbers know who we are, what we do, and how we can help them with their plumbing business and for them to kind of join our company because we needed new plumbers. Um, Jeremy kind of gave me some key points that he wanted to touch base on throughout the video but I wrote out the entire script and I have proof of that I wrote out the entire script and I made sure to hit all of the key points that he wanted me to hit fast forward it's January and we're really cracking down on trying to create this video so we put the finishing touches on the script that I wrote and then it was just going to be up to me to find the time to go to the office because they wanted a part of their office with like a bunch of like logos um, on the wall that they had. And those logos were all of the clients that they worked with. So they always worked with department stores like Ross, Walmart, like the Dollar Tree, places like that. So they had all of like the logos on this wall. They wanted that to be like the backdrop of the video. So I had to film this video at the office. It's up to me to make this happen. And I remember they had a son and a daughter and the daughter's birthday was coming up. Of course, Jeremy and Rachel knew that I had a stepson around the same age as their kids. So they invited me and David and Julian to their daughter's birthday party. This happened, cause I, I don't wanna like embellish, I wanna give you guys the exact date that this happened. Um, Saturday, January 9th. So Saturday, January 9th was the day of their daughter's birthday party. And it was also the day that I planned on using my time off to go into the office and film this video for them. So I went to Target and I bought their daughter this huge birthday gift 
and I stopped by. They had it at a skating rink, at Skate City actually. And I stopped by there with David. Just wanted to stop by and wish their daughter a happy birthday. And these are my bosses. I had gotten so close to them, you know? Right after the party, David and I left and went straight back to the office to film this video. So I grabbed all of my equipment. My box lights, my ring light, my camera, my tripod, everything. David and I lugged all of my equipment into the office and did a whole setup. And I will show you guys a picture here of the setup that we had. Um, they had terrible lighting in the small office, so I had very little to work with. I went in on my day off on a Saturday and I filmed this video. I spent all day Sunday editing it and I added in some photos that Jeremy wanted me to add in. The room as a whole, like the audio just bounced off the walls really weird. And so I spent all of the next day, January 10th, which was a Sunday, I spent the entire day editing this video, okay? Here, here's an extra piece of information. So before I filmed this video, they wanted me to create an actual YouTube channel for their business to put this video up. Because Jeremy wanted this to be like a regular thing for me to make videos like for HR purposes with different pieces of information. So that way in his onboarding process, he could like send them this link and they would be able to see the videos and have all of their questions answered by me, pretty much. So I created the video, I wrote out the script, I filmed it, you know, I had the whole setup and then we tore down and then all of Sunday, I spent on trying to edit this video, okay? So I sent him over the final, you know, product and he texts me. I'm gonna let you guys know exactly what he said because of course I have photos of that too. I'll have a screenshot right here and it says, wow, I love it. You did a ridiculously great job. I am very impressed. This is exactly what we need to fill up our technician lineup. You outdid yourself. And I replied with, thank you. I'm so proud of the way it came out. I think this will change our recruiting strategy tremendously. Thank you, thank you. So everything was all good. He approved it and we had that dialogue and he basically gave me the green light to go ahead and upload the video. We wanted the video to be uploaded by Monday so that all of our new hires, we could just send out this link and they would have like basically this introductory video for them to kind of get a feel of who we were, right? So this is where shit got real fucking messy and this is where shit went downhill, okay? I spent my Saturday at their kid's birthday party and and filming and I spent my Sunday editing and talking to Jeremy about this video and getting the green light for him. Sunday evening I uploaded the video, okay? That night, Sunday evening, I got a call from my mom and she was heading to the emergency room. Um, my mom was experiencing some health issues at the time and she went to the emergency room and at the time my brother wasn't in town so I was the only one here obviously and that's my mother so I went to go take care of my mom. Um, upon arriving to the ER, I found out that it was pretty serious and they needed to keep her overnight. So I decided to stay with her. I texted Jeremy and Rachel and asked them if I could have the following Monday off the next day so that I could take care of my mom and make sure that she got home okay and that she was getting the proper treatment. They said, absolutely, that's fine, of course, no problem. So we were good, you know? Monday rolls around and my mom's in the hospital. My mom was released from the hospital at around two or three in the afternoon. And I took her home, made sure that she ate, made sure that she was taking her prescription medication and, you know, made sure that everything was all good. I just had this sinking feeling. I don't know what it was. I don't, I just already knew. Like I even told David, something's weird, like something's off. I got a text from Rachel on um, Monday evening and she said, we're going to be opening the office a little late tomorrow so you can come in at 11. So I was like, okay. And that's really weird. Like I was just like, what is going on? So I go into work late as Rachel asked. I walked into the office and Rachel and Jeremy were waiting for me in the front and they were both sitting at this table waiting for me. Both sitting there and I'm like, hey, what's going on? Like, that's so weird. So Jeremy was like, we need to talk to you. Now, keep in mind, they didn't ask me to take a seat. They, they, nothing. They just both fucking sat there and looked at me like assholes and were like, we need to talk to you. And I was like, okay. Talk. Well, we went into your office yesterday while you were out looking for some accounting paperwork and it looked like you hadn't done the accounting that you needed to do and we went through your history on your computer and you've been spending a lot of time on YouTube. 
yeah, no shit. No shit I've been spending a lot of time on YouTube. I don't know, creating your channel, creating your content, cre uploading a video. Like, what the fuck you mean? As far as the accounting paperwork, you remember how I told you guys how I had to split it up because I'm one person and I'm only there four hours out of the day. So Monday was supposed to be my accounting day, okay? And I wasn't in on Monday because of the family emergency that I had with my mother. So I was really confused. And so I was like, okay, well, there's a reason for all of that. And Jeremy decided to pipe his ass in and tell me that there was no need to discuss it, that he had already made a decision and that they decided to terminate my employment uh, effective immediately. So they had packed up my things um, from my desk and they put it in a grocery bag. Um, they handed me a check um, and they basically told me to piece the fuck out. And I looked at Jeremy and her and I was just like really hurt. And I was like, what the fuck? Like keep in mind the previous Saturday, two days prior, I was working on this video for them. Sunday, I spent the whole day working on this video and you're gonna go through my office, find this shit, and I'm supposed to be doing accounting on Monday and I had a family emergency and then you get me involved into YouTube for your business and you want to complain that I've been on YouTube too much. Like, the fuck you mean? Are you serious? You guys don't feel like there needs to be a conversation before deciding on something like that? No, we don't need to talk about it. I've already made my decision. You can leave. So I'm not gonna beg anybody, okay? Because I know my skills, I know my experience. I know that I was a valuable asset to their company. And I know this because of all of the improvements I had made in two and a half months time in comparison to where they were before and where they are now. So what the fuck you mean? Well, I have no problem piecing out, it's fine. So I grab my things and I leave. I call my mom, I'm really upset. And so of course my first instinct is that is my video, that is my work, that is my content, that is my script. I want that video back. So keep in mind, I created the YouTube channel myself. I created the account. And I would given them the password in order to be able to make any edits to the description of the video based on whatever information they wanted to give out to the plumbers. Well. I get home and immediately I log on to YouTube so that I can remove that video. They're not about to keep my shit after doing me like that. Well, turns out they changed the password. And they changed the password because they had every intention of using me for that video and then firing me two days later, okay? So they changed the password. I could not get my video back. So immediately I start thinking legally. I could have sued them for my work, um, production, script writing, filming, and editing all cost money, honey, okay? So, and they didn't pay me nothing for that. They didn't pay me shit. And I was okay with that considering the fact that I was their employee. But now that I'm no longer your employee, yeah, that doesn't fucking work. So I was pissed because I couldn't get that video back because they changed the password. So I consulted with an attorney. He definitely said that I had every right to that video. However, his attorney fees were out of this world, okay? Now keep in mind, this is the same girl that couldn't afford her fucking tires, much less to retain an attorney to fight for my property back. This is why I don't trust people that much and this is why I don't share my craft and this is why I don't share my passion with just anybody because people will use you. They will use you and then throw you off to the side. They knew, one, that I was a student, they knew that my mother was sick, and they still had the audacity to treat me that way, to tell me that I didn't have a place to speak, we did not have a discussion, they had already made their decision, and peace the fuck out, by the way, we changed the YouTube password so you can't have your video that you created on your time off, on the weekend, you do not have access to it. You will not have it and we will continue to use it for our business ventures going forward because I just checked last night and the video is still up. I will link that video down in my description box below if you guys would like to see it. Videos do not just come out of thin air. People can't just pull videos out of their ass. It takes a lot of work. It doesn't matter how short the video is. It doesn't matter how long the video is. It does not matter. It takes a lot of work. And I went in on my Saturday on on my day off lugging all of my equipment and I took all of my Sunday to edit it and get it up as I was supposed to 
and they did me like that. This is not slander, it's not slander, and here's why, because that is my video, that is my content, that is my work, so I can say whatever the fuck I want about my work that was never given back to me, that I was never compensated for, and that they did that shit to me. I just couldn't even believe it, you guys, like really, I could not believe it, like how can you tell somebody that came in on their weekend to work on a video to expand your business that they're not working hard enough for you, that they're being negligent, I am not negligent. I am not an irresponsible person. That is not who I am and that is not my kind of work ethic. And for you guys to treat me that way and not only terminate me two days after creating this video for your business, but also to keep my work and to change the password solely to keep my work from me, solely so that I could not take it down, is absolutely unprofessional and unethical. That is my story about the time that my boss stole from me. And not my boss, my bosses, okay? both of them, husband and wife in their 30s acting like this, taking from somebody that was a student that had an ill mother that really, really wanted to help their business. How dare you take from me like that? How dare you take my material, my content, my work? Look at me now. Like I'm so happy. I'm flourishing and I'm successful and I will not be used by anybody ever again. And I've learned my lesson. So thank you, Jeremy and Rachel, for teaching me a very, very valuable lesson on how to conduct my business going forward and to not be conducting my business as you are so thank you I love you guys I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up also don't forget to subscribe to my channel it's free and you will be notified of all of my new videos especially story times that are here on my channel every single Thursday let me know your thoughts down below let me know if you've ever been done wrong by your employers um, don't forget to follow me on all of my social media my snapchat my Twitter and my Instagram I will leave all of that information down in my description box below don't forget to subscribe to my channel of course and I will see you guys in my next video Oh,